In this video, I'll show you how you can use bed sheets as backgrounds in your small home studio. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm going back to my roots, so I test out my very first type of background, bed sheets as backgrounds. Well, technically they're duvet covers, which is great because it means I can slide in a two by one piece of timber, put some weight at the bottom and get them to hang a little bit better. Now I've got three brand new bed sheets to play with. The first one is just this basic black bed sheet here. Then I've got a stripy, lightweight, slightly shiny bed sheet. And finally, a much heavier patterned black bed sheet. Yes, I like black backgrounds, but the question is, can bed sheets make good backgrounds? Well, the only way to find that out is to get a light set, get a model in, and let's get shooting. So I've been joined in the studio today by the amazing Meg Biffin. She's gonna be the model for this shoot, and we're gonna start with the most basic of backgrounds. It's the black bed sheet. Now, black is a great color to begin with if you're new to studio work because, well, not least, shadows. Dark shadows on a dark background mean that's something you don't have to worry about. However, I'm also using a softbox, so my shadows shouldn't be a problem. So let's just see what we get. Here we go. So that works very nicely. It's a simple lighting setup with a simple background. But the thing about black backgrounds, well, they're not actually black. What they are is a really, really dark shade of gray. And we can lighten the gray by well, just taking one of these lights, popping it in behind Meg and pointing it straight at the background. Now, when I do that, that's gonna make this but black go a little bit brighter. Let's just see how that changes the shot. The black is great because when it was black and really dark, we didn't need to worry about any creases. Ironing wasn't really an issue. But the minute we put light on it, we can see all of the creases. Now, I don't mind those, but they're too much in focus at F8. So I'm gonna use an Olympus 45 mm f1.2 lens, wide open at 1.2. Now in order to make this work, I need to use something called high speed sync flash. Now you can find out a lot more about that on some of my previous videos here on Adorama TV or check out the Adorama Learning Center. Okay, let's take some pictures. So that worked really well. We've got a much shallower depth of field this time. That background, although it is a bit creased and wrinkled, it doesn't really matter. In fact, I think it actually adds to the pictures. Our second background is similar to the first one in as much as it's dark, but this time you'll notice a subtle difference. There is a line of stripes that are slightly more shiny than the rest of the black background. Now, having put this up, we've discovered a few things about stripy backgrounds. The first one is if the stripes aren't totally vertical, you'll notice that in the picture. And as it is a bed sheet and not a proper background, getting it totally smooth has proved to be something of a challenge. But this is the best we can do. It looks pretty good. It's not too bad. Let's see what it looks like when we take a shot like this. This time I've gone for a different lighting position just to mix it up. It's going to light Meg and it's gonna light the background. But if I want to see those lines a little bit brighter, I need to go get that second light that we had before and pop it as before right in behind Meg, pointing straight at the background, and we'll take a shot like this. The amount of light that I put on the background will have an impact on how bright it appears to be. So we can put lots of light on, or we can have just a little bit of light. So those work really well, but once again, I can see the background is quite crisp and sharp at f8. So let's switch over to that 1.2 lens and try with a much wider aperture, shallower depth of field, and see whether the creases and the stripy background work with a shallower depth of field. So with the shallower depth of field, the stripes are still there, the creases are less obvious. However, it is a much harder background to work with. So let's try our third and final background. 
So the last background is the one I thought was going to be the most challenging, which is this sort of patterned background. Again, it's a dark background with a sort of shiny surface, and that should work quite nicely with the lighting setup we've got here. Same lighting as before, let's try this background. So that's really interesting. Although the light is in the same position as the stripy background, the background is almost completely black like the first one. It's amazing just how changing the, the fabric and the pattern makes all the difference to the shots. So if I want to see the pattern in this shot, I'm definitely gonna put some light on it. Let's try that. So this is working quite nicely, but there's always things you can do to change the lighting. And one of the easiest ways is adding a gel to the background light. So I've got a couple of different gels. Let's add these in, see how they look. Well, that was great fun, and we've got a fantastic range of photos. Whichever bedsheet background you use, be prepared to spend some time steaming out those creases, because it might be time worth spent, especially on a background like this, where it looked much better in focus compared to when it was out of focus. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a comment below, and if you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do? You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.